<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be doing, I guess, maybe a little bit of a tips and tricks video and kind of a clarification video, so to speak. This is not going to be a full tutorial, so there's going to be a few things I'm kind of just going to glaze over and I'm not going to go into elaborate detail on, but the things I do want to provide tips on, I will provide more detail on. So if you have a Vita system or a PlayStation TV or a Vita TV, I'm going to refer to all of them as a Vita from here on out here, and you are wanting to use a micro SD card on your modified Vita, I am going to have a tutorial linked showing you how to set that up using Storage Manager. And this is going to be some tips and tricks for a few things that I have seen questions about, with the main theme being in regards to using large storage on the SD to Vita. Now, by large storage, I would typically mean anything bigger than a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. I've seen a lot of people use that tutorial successfully, and the ones who have had issues have been the people who have been using 256 gigabyte micro SD cards or even larger. So for this, I actually have a 400 gigabyte micro SD card, and I just took it out of the packaging, and what we're going to do is we're going to format it, set up the Vita here that I'm using, which is my PlayStation TV, and hopefully increase the storage to around 400 gigabytes. So first of all, I'll go ahead and show you all my settings, and to do this, you will need a modified Vita. So as you can see, I have Hinkaku settings right here. I will show you all Everything here, I have enable PSN spoofing, all that other fun stuff, but everything is here to begin with, just fine. But for our actual system settings, system information, as you can see right here, I'm on 3.60 firmware, and I do have Enzo installed on this as well and running. So that's going to be one thing right off the bat. If you are having some issues with Storage Manager, the best firmwares to be on are 3.60 and 3.65 with the Enzo Cold Boot exploit installed. You want to do this so this way when you turn on your Vita, you already have everything loaded in. You don't have to worry about anything else. So 3.60, 3.65 firmwares with Enzo. If you don't have Enzo already, I recommend installing it. If you're on a higher firmware, I recommend downgrading and installing Enzo. But as you can see from the manage content on memory card, because I do have a gigabyte of internal storage on here, thanks to this being a PlayStation TV, I have about a gigabyte available there. So we are going to be changing that, and by the time this is all done, that should say about 400 gigabytes. I don't have too much on here. I'm actually going to go in and even delete these titles here, just because these were some games that I had run on here just to dump, but none of them are actual full installations of the games themselves. So I'm really not even going to free up that much space, but I just kind of want to clean up everything here, so to speak. So we're not going to have too much else on this. This is going to essentially be a freshly set up and modified Vita that we're going to be messing with. So to continue, I'm going to need my network available. As you can see in the top left corner, I am hooked up to my network. So now I'm going to go over to Vita Shell and launch this. And right here, I already have unsafe mode enabled and all that fun stuff. I'm going to press the select button. And as you can see here, I have a FTP server running. You can also use USB if you want to, but I'm going to be using FTP for this. So with this up and running, I have my IP address and my port right there. I'm going to keep this running and move over to the computer. All right, so over at the PC, I'm going to be using WinSCP as my preferred FTP login client here. I just need to edit this. I had it here before but 251.1337 and anonymous login is just fine. I'm going to log in here and there we go. We are in the Vita on the right hand side of everything. So first of all, we do need to make sure that anything from UX0 tie is moved over to UR0 tie. And because I have set this up properly before, my tie folder with all my plugins and such is already inside of UR0. And there's nothing inside of UX0, so I don't need to worry about anything there. Now, the next thing I'm going to need to do is transfer over a few files. It's going to be storage config as well as storage manager. And I have not configured storage config yet, so I'm just going to edit this here on my own PC. But first of all, for MCDUMA0, uh, I do not plan to use a Sony memory card any further, so I'm going to remove this. If you do want to use a memory card, keep that in there for INT equals IMC0. Since I'm a PlayStation TV user, 
I need to keep that in, as well as if you're a PS Vita 2000 user. If you're a 1000 user, you can remove that. For GCD equals UXD0, since I'm using a SD to Vita, that will be fine. Uh, if this was for a USB drive or PSVD storage device, this would need to be changed to UMA0. So it would be something like UMA0, but we're not going to be doing that. So there's that. And then finally, UMA equals GRW0. This one, I'm only going to have one storage device here, so I'm going to remove it. But that's only if you need multiple storage devices. So I'm going to save that, close out of there, and now we can go over to UR0, tie, and I'm going to take both the storage config and storage manager and upload them into the UR0 tie folder. So now we just need to edit the config file if need be. So I'm going to come here to edit and everything is UR0, thankfully, except for this one, which is our adrenaline kernel. And this one I'm actually going to keep the same because we're going to transfer this folder and everything we're going to transfer that over to the SD to Vita, and the SD to Vita is going to become UX0. So that one I'm okay with keeping UX0, but everything else is UR0, and that is just fine. However, for this, I do need to add this in here. So for this, let's see, I'm going to do right under kernel, UR0, colon, tie, slash, and just so I make sure I don't mess up anything, I'm going to pull the exact file name there, Put it in like that so there the first thing that's going to load up is going to be storage manager and i'm going to save that and that has been saved to the vita at least it should be there now the next thing we need to do is we need to back up the entire ux0 folder so now i can verify again our tie folder inside of ur0 is all there ux0 contains nothing but what i'm going to do is i'm going to transfer this over so i'm actually going to just do ux0 and download it there we go and there it's just going to do a transfer of everything over to my pc now while that's going on i'm just going to minimize that and we can work on the sd card so as you can see i have my micro sd card right here after the formatting and such it is 366 gigabytes and i have just plugged this thing in so we're going to go through the whole formatting process for this, I'm going to use Win32 Disk Imager, which is recommended, and you need to pick your device. Now, make sure you're picking the right one. So for me, I'm using USB drive I, so I need to pick I instead of G. And for here, I'm going to pick our ZZ blank image file. This is going to be right here inside my Vita transfer folder, ZZ blank image. And I'm going to actually, no, not that. I'm going to write it and yes, okay. It wrote it just like that, that easily. So I'm going to exit out of here. And now the micro SD card should be utilized properly, but we do still need to format it as well. So I'm going to just simply format this. And this is going to be the important thing here. If you are doing this, make sure you have your capacity as is, XFAT file system. And for the allocation unit size, this is going to be the recommendation here. If you are using anything that is going to be larger than 128 gigabytes in size, so really 256 gigabytes or higher, set this to 64 kilobyte allocation size. Do not use the default. Do not use what is recommended. Select 64 kilobytes. And then once you do that, click on start. OK. And it has been formatted successfully to XFAT with 64 kilobyte allocation size. And that's going to be the big thing that trips up a lot of people. So checking back over on WinSCP, as you can see, everything has been transferred over. So I'm actually going to close out of this. Yes, that's fine. And now I'm going to come over here, UX0, and this is everything that I have. So I'm going to just copy everything like this. And since we have our micro SD card plugged in, I'm going to go to our iDrive and paste it right here. And this should take noticeably less time, but as you can see, it's just going to copy everything over. So at the end, your micro SD card should look like this, just like when you go straight into it, it's going to look like you have a blown up UX0 folder right here. That should all be fine. So everything's been transferred over at this point. What I'm going to do is come back and safely eject my micro SD card. 
and I'm going to pop it into the SD2 Vita. Over at the Vita, these changes won't take effect until we restart everything, so I'm going to cancel out of this, close out of Vita Shell, and I'm going to turn off the Vita itself. And when we turn it off, I recommend turning it off, put your SD to Vita in the system, and then turn it on. All right, so our Vita has turned back on. Everything looks to be there. I'm actually going to launch Vita Shell, and we'll be able to see this from here as well too. But it looks like that is launching, and then if I go to UX0, check that out. That is showing 163 megabytes being used out of 366.8 gigabytes available. So if that's not enough, I'm also going to exit out of here. I'm going to go over to our settings. Here we go. And if I go over to our system settings, system information, right there, capacity 366 gigabytes, free space 366 gigabytes. So as you can see, we were able to upgrade the storage with pretty much no issues at that point. What I'm going to do as well, just to make sure this is indeed working, we've already tried some homebrew, we've showed all the settings here, but I'm going to transfer over one or two games and boot them up for you all just so I can show it working. So we can do this through Vita Shell. however since we have a micro SD card and I can just transfer everything faster through USB, what I'm going to do is just plug the micro SD card directly into my computer. But for that I always recommend turning off the Vita. So I'm going to come here, turn off the Vita, and then I'm going to transfer this to my PC. All right, so these are a couple games that I own and have backed up already, and they are all set up and ready to go in regards to no NP DRM. So I have them all set up on that side of things, as well as that too. I have no NP DRM, the plugin set up on the Vita. That's a whole other video if you want to check that out, but I'm going to grab Deathmark. This is just an app folder. Copy it and paste it onto the micro SD card and let it paste over and I'm going to go back to Final Fantasy 10 app copy and paste that over as well and I picked these two games one because they're great games and two because they're larger games so it's going to actually show a better comparison of the size difference and such being used when we look at everything so I'm just going to wait another minute or two for this to transfer over and then we will initialize them on the Vita and make sure they both work all right, so this is right there done transferring. I'm just going to come back here, eject our USB, and let's go ahead and pop that back into the SD to Vita and then turn on the Vita. All right, so upon launching the system here, I'm just going to go over to Vita Shell and launch this as we're going to need to use this to install everything. As you can see, 4.37 gigabytes are now being used. And if I press the triangle button and go to refresh live area and continue, it is going to spend a few seconds doing this, and it's going to say that there should be two new items. So there we go, refresh two items. I'm going to press X, come out of here, and as you can see, we now have Deathmark, and we have Final Fantasy X. So first, let's go ahead and launch Deathmark, just to make sure that this is booting up and working. So here's our first game, Deathmark, booting up just fine right off of the SD to Vita. Again, from our 400 gigabyte micro SD card, that's working all fine. I'm going to do the same thing with Final Fantasy X and make sure this launches as well. And there we go, that launched effortlessly, thankfully. So that's our two games that are working right now. I'll go ahead and get us to the splash screen. And again, the only thing I really did here was just go through the process and make sure that 64 kilobytes was the allocation size to use. I'll even just for one last time go up to settings and show you all right here. So inside of our settings and then down in system settings, system information, check that out. That looks to be about right. About four gigabytes is being used out of the 366 we are using. So this is just to show you all the process start to finish to kind of give you maybe a few tips here and there and to show you that large storage capacity micro SD cards do indeed work just fine on the Vita. The big caveat here is going to be make sure your cluster size is 64 kilobytes. If you're using anything that's really going to be 
256 gigabytes in storage size or higher. So it looks like this 400 gigabyte micro SD card is working just fine. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.